As low brass players, we often do not have the melodic line and play a more supportive role in ensembles we play in, especially in wind band music. Playing as a section is therefore one of the most important things to develop from a young age, but this does not mean that we should play boring or without any shape, line or phrase. It is extra important that because of the lack of melodic material in our parts, that we must study and learn other parts to better inform us on how to play and phrase things. Remember, composers write with the whole piece in mind and we must look for the clues as a whole. Lance will play and share some tips on two popular excerpts in this video. While these excerpts are mostly accompaniment, there are moments where he explores the difference between phrasing as a leading voice and also a supporting role. Most of the instruments in a band or orchestra, such as clarinet, horn, saxophone, or even euphonium, they often have melody lines to perform in a musical piece. Although, as a trombonist or a trombone section, we don't often have melody lines in our parts, not to mention solos. So in this case, we are pretty much performing as a team, because most of the time when we play, no matter melody, duty, or accompaniment, we always come in together as a trombone section. If you are in a symphony orchestra, this also includes tuba as a low brass section. So instead of talking about the art of phrasing as a melodic solo, today I would like to share with you some ideas about the art of phrasing as a section. So the music I just played for you is from a song called 76 Trombones. This march is originally from the musical film The Music Man. This piece is composed by Meredith Wilson and this version was arranged by the well-known Japanese band music arranger Naohiro Iwai for wind, band and as for our instruments, it includes three trombone parts and a bass trombone part. This excerpt appears after the introduction and then trombones and euphoniums came out as the first melody of the piece. We can divide these short excerpts into two parts. The first part is the main theme of the music. In this case, announced by the trombones and euphoniums in the band. And our role in the second part is changed to the counter melody while trumpets take over the melody line. came from. The music starts with the band marching in, and then the people join in and sing along. Whenever we have the chance to play in a musical ensemble, we want to try to make every note we produce as musically connected as possible. I usually will try to analyze the phrases so I can not only plan where to breathe, but also knowing where I would like my musical direction flows to. In the first part of this excerpt, where we divide into smaller groups, we can tell that they are basically formed by four bar phrases. With an exception of an eight bars phrase. So, as for the first part of this excerpt, I like to use the pickup triplets as an energy source that leads to the on beats of each starting phrase. And for the remaining of the phrase, I will let the flow sings to the end of the phrase, or a rest point if it is a longer phrase. I will exaggerate my dynamics 
just to show you an idea about how I will sing through my musical flow. Of course, in real performance, you don't perform such dynamic changes like I just did. And for the second part of this excerpt, our parts become counter melody with the trumpets taking over the melody, just like the usual days. Even when our role as counter melody is less important than the main melody, I will still try to sing through the each phrases because as a counter melody or, or even as an accompaniment, when we can sing musically with our instrument on such phrases, it can actually help the main melody lines shine even further because of the different background color we have helped picturing. This means doing the same planning on phrasing, mark the phrases, plan the ups and downs of the musical flow, just like we just did for the first part, except we are not the leading voice anymore, which also means we are more like a supporting background for the leading voice, and we do not have to play as loud as when we were playing the main melody before. we are playing the same thing all together. We want to sound as united as possible. When our rhythmic performance can lock with each other tight enough, it can form a strong and firm sound that can easily deliver the sound across the band or the orchestra to the last row of the audience seat in the hall you are performing, without each of you physically pushing on the volume. Otherwise, it can sound pretty messy, which comes to the following situations you would want to avoid. Or if some or all of the section blasting their parts way too loud. Another benefit we can take advantage of when we are all playing the same melody in unison is we can stagger breathing. Which means in order to make the music sing as flow as possible without unnecessary stopping because of the breathing point, each of us can breathe in different spots to sustain the musical flow as a section. categorized as a low pitch instrument, it is not necessary to play out our maximum volume to deliver our sound to the audience to be heard, as we just talked about when our rhythmic patterns and intonation came out neat and tidy, the section sound should be firm enough to soar across the hall even when it is in a softer dynamic. The excerpt you just heard is one of the most important trombone moments in the history of symphonic orchestra repertoire. This chorale is from the fourth movement of Johannes Brahms' Symphony No. 1 in C minor, opus 68. In case you haven't known, chorale is a form of music 
when uh, you will usually hear three or four parts of voices singing together, with one voice being the main melody and the other voices singing rather similar rhythm with the main melody at the same or a different timing but in different notes to create the harmonization. For example, composer Johann Sebastian Bach is very well known of his religious chorales he dedicated to the God. The excerpt you just heard happens in the fourth movement of this symphony. After three movements of Tatet and a short passage accompanying the horn solo, who performs an alp horn tune in C major, followed by the flutes who play the same tune again before the melody chorale by the trombones and bassoons. The chorale starts on letter C or bar 47, depends on the version you have on hand, and lasts for 5 bars. The dynamic written there is piano dolce, which means soft and sweet. But at these five bars, the whole orchestra are not playing except the trombones and bassoons. So rather than compressing our volume to a very, very low level, we could actually think more like it is one of the peacefully quiet moments in the entire symphony compared to other louder and more intense moments. You can also see there is a quiver rest on the fourth beat of the first bar under the rhythm phrase mark. Where you see a rest, it doesn't necessarily mean a stop. The music is still happening during the rest. Same as the famous theme and the beginning of the Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. Ba -ba -ba -bam, ba -ba -ba -bam, which starts with a quiver rest and then followed by three quivers and a long tone. The rest mark written in such phrases are there to create a tension towards the next phrase. As French composer Claude Debussy says, music is the silence between the notes. Think of another example. When you have done something wrong at home, your parents might be there yelling at you. But when it comes to the time when you have done something wrong again or worse, but your parents just standing or sitting there glaring at you without saying anything. Isn't that moment scary? That's a kind of power in the silence. And here comes another quote I would like to share with you by legendary jazz trumpeter Miles Davis. Don't play what is there, play what is not there. You can see there is two phrase marks with also staccato on it. Now, as most of us grew up playing in school bands, there are many cases that we need to play really short staccato notes. When I see staccato marks, I would like to think it as an earlier release of each note, instead of cutting off each note earlier. When I see staccato marks, over phrasing or slur marks, I would like to think that each of them are even more musically connected. The important point is here is even though staccato has to be performed shorter, we need to really sing through these phrases to make them musically connected. After these two phrases, you can see two bars of long tones. Try to think that this big phrase only comes to its end at bar 5 instead of right after the slurred staccato. Up next, it is another 10 bars of horns and woodwinds taking turns to perform the up horn tune again, while the trombones join the strings and timpani as a long sustaining accompaniment. When we are playing in an ensemble group, it is important to understand what everyone else parts are like. We need to play their parts in our mind, especially the leading voice, so we can understand better where the music moment is leading to. For example, the crescendo for bar 54, building up to bar 56 where our dynamic is built from pianissimo up to a loud mezzo forte and diminuendo at the last 4 bars to resolve this section. A 
among all the white long notes, if you see some black color shorter notes like bar 57 and 58 on the second and third trombones, it usually means a kind of short counter melody or a response moment between you and some other parts. Paul, make it like a call and response. Show a little bit of your color. So you can tell from what I tried to explain to you just now, there is already so many details the composer have included in this one minute out of his old symphony that lasts up to 45 minutes. While it is important to accurately perform the details written or different requests asked by the conductors, the most important part is to really feel the music, sing through every phases, even when we as a trombonist sitting on the stage without many actual notes playing. Fit yourself into the music, be in this complete artwork. As Ludwig van Beethoven said, to play a wrong note is insignificant, but to play without passion is inexcusable. At last, let's listen to this excerpt again. This time you will see me playing also the uphorn tunes, which are originally played by the horns in the orchestra. So this video has almost coming to an end. These are some tips I could share about the art of phrasing. To get much more ideas in the art of phrasing, I strongly suggest you to listen to lots of music. Not only trombone music, not only brass music, listen also to woodwind music, string music, piano sonata, violin concertos, symphonies, wind bands, orchestras, jazz, rock, salsa, anything. Not only music, looking at paintings, calligraphy, especially good movies where you can find beautiful film music inside, walking in the nature, any sort of arts that exist in your life. I find that the more I have experienced this in my life, the more I can be inspired not only as a musician, an artist, and also as a human being. I hope you find something useful for you from today's video as well as other videos in this Art of Phrasing series produced by the Rondo Production. Thank you for tuning in, stay safe and healthy. My name is Lance and I hope to see you soon. Happy practicing!